going on pilots? This is Pete. This is your LX model's near 80 inch wingspan B25 tip video. In this video, I'm going to show you some of my setups and a few tips on uh, this beautiful B25 once you have it built and uh, you're ready to do your setup stages to get to the field. This is your completed after the build uh, B25 made by LX. Uh, we're gonna start with tip number one, which is inserting the main wing portion into the center section. And you'll take note that this little piece here has a little notch in it. And then underneath there is a small Phillips head screw that will be uh, screwed into that portion to tighten it down to the uh, center of the wing, wing section. So we're going to go ahead and press this all the way in. So you're going to guide the center rod, hold the fuselage, and press all the way in. First thing we're going to take notice is that uh, this Phillips head screw here is screwed into a plastic base for the center section of that wing rod. And uh, keep in mind this is plastic. This is a self-tapping screw. So when you screw this in, all this is doing is going into the groove of that center piece and then holding it in place. So do not over tighten the screw. This is very, very crucial because this screw can over tighten and you will end up stripping uh, that piece of uh, plastic mount right around there. Um, a tip, another tip for you there is if you choose to on this center piece here, you can always add a little bit of plastic cement to the metal of the screw and what that will do is that will seat the screw a little bit better and then keep it a little bit tighter, but yet you're still able to remove it. But however, you do not want to use any type of uh, Loctite or any type of a thread lock because this is a metal screw going into a plastic base. So the battery pack for this LX model's B25 is a four cell 5200 milliamp uh, amp hour. Uh, we call it a brick pack. Uh, your other tip is you don't have to use this particular battery. You can use uh, two four cell batteries in 2200 or 2500 milliamp or even 3000 milliamp size range in uh, parallel. And I'll go ahead and show you here. This is our battery compartment. There we go. And uh, it does fit in here. This there, There's plenty of room in this battery bay for you to use two four cells in parallel, um, upwards of maybe 3,000 milliamps to add up to a 6,000 milliamp rated um, battery size there. The next thing that you're gonna want to take notice is underneath your canopy, you have two small magnetic uh, pieces there. And what that does is it attaches your canopy to these two metal pieces that are inside the fuselage. Um, another tip is for you here is when you get this, go ahead and remove the paint from the metal pieces because there will be overspray on this metal piece here. And you can almost remove it with your finger. Uh, you don't need any kind of sandpaper. If you do have some sandpaper, definitely use that and get that paint off of there so the magnet makes a better and stronger uh, connection with the fuselage. And your next thing there to keep that canopy on is if you see your your wire loom here that's going to your fuselage through your fuselage to the speed controllers and your battery pack you want to make sure that this is going to be well tucked out of the way because once this wire let's say we have this down like this it's going to bounce back up and in this sense here you can and uh, you may pop the canopy off during flight and then that would create a problem uh, definitely. So go ahead and tuck this away, either by strapping it down in the Velcro or tucking it underneath. Uh, what I like to do is I like to move all the excess wire right underneath into that cavity back there. You can see here I've cleanly tucked away the battery wire into the side of the battery and uh, underneath the Velcro straps if you choose to and then it's directly underneath the uh, center of the fuselage. And in that sense there, your canopy will have a solid snap. As you can hear, that's a solid connection with the magnets there so it doesn't pop off during flight. And then uh, for fine tuning of your radio system, the top gun comes off, the gun tower comes off, and uh, all your wire loom is underneath there. 
and then we go ahead and snap that back on and that goes right there and that's where your receiver is going to be mounted is directly underneath here the next thing I would like to talk about here is the bomb bay uh, the bomb doors the bomb doors on this B25 is on a separate channel on a separate switch as you can see on uh, my JR radio I had this on auxiliary 3 uh, which is a slider uh, this aircraft does take a fifth channel for the gear system and then it does take a, a sixth channel for your flaps and then a seventh channel is going to be for your uh, onboard electric brakes and then you can opt to use this bomb door or you can choose to disengage it if you choose to and leave it in the up position but uh, depending on your radio that's about all that you need this bomb door to open it doesn't need to be opening any further than that it does come with a set of bombs that you can put in there or you can have fun with kids and uh, do candy drops and uh, things like that over the runway the next little tidbit that we have for you here is you can see here I have a little section of uh, fuel tubing. This is just silicone fuel tubing made for your nitromethane airplanes and or you can use uh, shrink tubing for wiring or anything of that sort. And what I'm doing with this is simple. I get a pair of scissors and what I do is I cut a very thin piece of that off just like that and you end up with a small tiny piece of fuel tubing and it looks just like that and uh, what we're doing with this is we're using these to hold the control clevises onto the bottom of all the control surfaces so this tip here I learned from my dad and it's transferable from aircraft to aircraft uh, once you can once you're building this you can already have these already on all the control clevises and or you can do it afterwards after you've already set up your surfaces and what I do is I use a needle nose pair of pliers and I will open up the fuel tubing and I would insert it right over on top of the clevis and then I would reattach the clevis to my control surface just like that press it back on and then I will slide the little o-ring fuel tubing back over the end of the control clevis and what that does it holds this clevis in place in case uh, any vibrations or anything pops it open it's just a security measure and uh, this tip here is transferable into every single airplane you own that has this type of a control clevis on your control surfaces Now let's take a look at the retractable landing gear system on the B-25. We're just going to go ahead and cycle the gears for you. And what we're doing here is uh, you see when your gears are up, doors would come down, your gears would retract up, and then your doors will follow with the sequencing uh, mechanism that shuts the doors. Uh, sometimes you'll have your doors not close all the way and it's not a big issue when your gear is down you'll see inside that these doors are held on by the same clevises that your control services are using so you can go ahead and adjust these a little bit shorter to get a better fitment with the doors to close there Now let's go ahead and talk about your control surface throws and uh, what kind of, this is one of the most popular questions is how much movement should you use in your control surface throws? Of course, that is a personal preference in how your flying style is going to be, but this is a B-25 bomber, so we don't need a whole lot of movement, yet uh, you can set different settings. And what I use is a Hangar 9 Angle Pro uh, this is a digital pitch gauge basically and um, it gives you the angles of the control surface by clipping that onto the surface itself and then moving the surface up and down. Okay, I'm going to attach my surface gauge onto the control surface here and then I'm going to acquire which zeroes out the gauge so we're at zero degrees Let's see if I can get this zoomed in here. So we're at just about zero degrees on my ailerons. And then we're going to go to full up, full left aileron. 
and I'm at about 21.5 degrees. Let me back that up a little bit. Went out of the meter there. So at about 21.5, 21.6 on the left aileron. And about 19.1, 19.2 on the downside. So what you do now is you mechanically set up your ailerons so that it has enough deflection equally up as down if you choose to. But because this is a B-25 and we're not going to be rolling this airplane, um, I don't mind that little bit of variance in, uh, in the, how much the uh, ailerons are traveling. All right, so now we are on the elevator. Let's go ahead and hit acquire. And I'm at just about, sometimes it's uh, off by a couple of points and it's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the elevator. I have 20.8 on the up elevator side and then about 19.7 19.8 on the down elevator side and of course i have a dual rate set up so that's high rate this is now low rate at 15.0 degrees on uh, low rates so definitely set up low rate and high rate and um, i believe it's 15 degrees as well that i have set up on my ailerons as well and then as for the rudder the rudder is a little bit hard to see and uh, let's see I'm at uh, 28 degrees on high rates and I'm at 20 degrees 19 degrees on low rate so the rudder's personal preference I have it on two rates because I like um, my turn ratio with the nose gear there so that's about where my rates are set up so you can definitely set this up to your personal flying preference now let's go ahead and look at our flaps here. Um, keep in mind that the number of degrees with the Angle Pro will fluctuate because there is a little bit of weight to this, um, this meter here. And once you have it connected, it's gonna kind of droop a little bit. So let's go ahead and drop single stage flaps. I'm down about 60 degrees on single stage. And then full flaps, I'm down 35.5 degrees. And I very rarely use this much flaps coming in. Uh, about uh, 20 degrees, 16 to 20 degrees is probably exactly where I would like the, the setting to be. And uh, I find that plenty slow enough for this big bird to come down. And we hit the brakes. And that is your tip section for the LX models B25 available by Banana Hobby. Um, keep in mind another tip here, all the cannons and everything on here, they're plastic. So if they do break on you, you can glue them with super glue and or just uh, plastic cement. And then this is EPO foam. So you definitely can use epoxy or super glue on the foam pieces as well. So now, since we have it completely assembled and ready to go, let's go ahead and give you a flight of the LX models B25.
And that is your tip video for the LX Models B25. Uh, by all means, if there's anything that y'all wanna see as far as tips or techniques on uh, any individual aircrafts, uh, please let us know by telling us in the comment box below. Uh, these, again, are some of my settings for the LX Models near 80 inch B25. Again, Everything sets up extremely easy, wonderful looking airplane, extremely scale in the air, and extremely easy to fly. Uh, B-25s has always been one of my favorites, and they're just a wonderful aircraft and a piece of aviation history, and just uh, stands out so very nicely at the field. My name is Pete. Thank you all for checking out this tip video. We'll see you next time.